Okay, so let's see how well you can solve a math word problem. Now, this particular problem is not that difficult. You do need to know a few things, but hopefully uh, you'll find this a pretty straightforward and simple problem. But let's go and read the question. It is the following. You are in the corner of a 50-foot square room. What is the distance to the center of that room? Now, this is a multiple choice question, and uh, let's take a look at our answers here. So A, 25 feet, B, 28.1 feet, C, 32.4 feet, or D, 35.4 feet. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, let's take one more look at the problem. Hopefully it's pretty uh, straightforward and understandable, but effectively we are in the corner of a 50 foot square room. So that's our starting position. We want to get to the center. So from the corner to the center of the room, what is the distance? And uh, let's go and take a look at that answer right now. The correct answer is D, about 35.4 feet. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of solving a right triangle word problem because that's what we're really going to be dealing with here. Uh, although we have a square, uh, this really becomes a triangle problem and uh, specifically a right triangle problem. All right, now, uh, if you are a bit lost and you're saying, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, this wasn't such an easy word problem, math word problem, well, no big deal. By the time you finish this video, you too will be a certified professional expert in this problem. Okay, so all jokes aside, we have this lovely math word problem, and uh, most people, they just don't like, you know, if you don't like math, you uh, definitely don't like math word problem more word problems, excuse me. So I got to make my little happy faces here. So some people are like this and other people are very sad. And they're just, you know what? I don't like math. And now you're got me trying to figure out a math word problem. So for those of you that have math phobia, okay, with, uh, especially when it comes to word problems, you need to slow down. Okay. Slow down and always use the rule of three which is read the problem at least three times and make sure you understand the question. All right, so I've already read it a few times, but uh, never read a problem one time and then start doing something that is a bad strategy because oftentimes you think you understand the problem. You're like, oh, I get it. I'm going to go this direction. And then you're like, wait a minute, I'm a little bit lost. I think I went the you know, wrong path in terms of solving this problem. You go back, you reread the problem, and then maybe you go in a different direction. That takes too much time. And if you have to take math tests, uh, that's something you cannot afford. So it's better to just, you know, uh, be patient, let your mind kick in and understand the problem. But uh, once you've done that, what we need to do is model the situation, right? If you can visualize a problem, oftentimes you can see the solution. Now here we have, um, you know, a multiple choice uh, question. And uh, some of you might be saying, well, I'm going to take a guess, Mr. YouTube Math Man. And hopefully you did. You're like, all right, I can get this thing. And I'm just kind of maybe going to visualize myself walking from the corner of the room to the center and just kind of use some common sense, right? So you might be saying, well, I don't know. It, it might be maybe like 28 uh, or 32 you know, feet somewhere in this neck of the woods that, you know, maybe those answers make sense to you, right? So, you know, take a shot, even though these are wrong and this is right, at least you, you know, are trying. Okay. One of the worst things you can do on a math exam is leave a question uh, blank. Okay. And for me, uh, certainly I want you to take a guess, even if you don't understand what's going on. Now, some of you might have uh, uh, selected 25 feet because you're like, well, 50 feet, 25 feet, maybe we divide it by two. Uh, to get to the center of the room well unfortunately this is incorrect so the only way um you know really to uh, get the right answer with confidence is to solve the problem okay so let's go ahead and visualize uh, what's going on here we have this uh, 50 foot square room we're in the corner and we want to get to the center right effectively 
uh, what we want to do is determine the distance from the corner to the center. So here is the situation. And this is a square room, and uh, we kind of need to know something about squares. So squares, uh, of course, hopefully all of you know, it is a quadrilateral, which is a four-sided polygon. But uh, really, uh, the characteristics about a square is that all the sides are equal and all the angles are 90 degrees or right angles. So a 50-foot square room is 50 foot, 50 foot, 50 and 50, and each corner is a right angle, i.e. Uh, 90 degrees. And this is going to be very important, as you're going to see here in just one second. But to go from the uh, corner to the center, we're kind of traveling along. If we kind of continued on this path, we would go from the corner to the center, and we would just continue to get to the other corner. Okay, this is what we call the diagonal of this uh, square, okay? But really, what we have here is a triangle, and not just any triangle, we have a right triangle. So if you were thinking in these terms, that is excellent, and uh, let's talk about right triangles right now. Okay, so a right triangle, by definition, is a triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees, okay? And this is indicated by a lovely little square like this. So if you have a triangle and it doesn't have that square, you can't assume that uh, even though it may look like a right triangle, like a perfect nice square, you can't assume unless you have some other information that this is 90 degrees. So you have to have something that you know clearly indicates, yes, indeed, that this is 90 degrees. And if you have a right triangle, uh, things uh, should pop into your head immediately, okay, about, oh, right triangles, the one thing that should pop into your head. And as a matter of fact, I'll give you the abbreviations. So that's PT. Okay, if you know what that is, I'm going to put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you this right now. But when you uh, think of right triangles, I want you to think of PT. Now, I'm going back to my Marine Corps days. We're not talking about uh, physical training uh, per se. We're talking about something else called the Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, Pythagorean Theorem. I'm not going to write that out because I could very well likely misspell it. But here it is. This is uh, something that you definitely want to put into your long-term memory. Okay, so once again, it's called the Pythagorean Theorem. It looks complicated, but it's not that complicated. So here is what's going on with uh, this theorem. Now, I am using the word theorem, okay, just, uh, you know, for those of you that don't know what a theorem is, basically, that is something we can prove in math. Uh, you know, there's all different sorts of ways to describe formulas. We have formulas in, in you know, in geometry. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with geometry, or maybe some of you uh, remember your geometry, we have these things called postulates. Uh, there's theorems, there's formulas, there's properties, and they all have their own kind of, uh, say, technical uh, differences. But basically, what you want to do is understand this as a law of geometry, something you can definitely take to the bank. And here is how it works. Okay, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. These are the, uh, uh, this is a particular relationship between the sides of a right triangle. So if we have a right triangle, this applies. If we do not have a right triangle, this does not apply. Okay, there's something called the law of cosines. That's a little bit uh, more advanced, but basically you need to know that this only applies to right triangles. Okay, so a squared, b squared, and uh, c squared. So we have these variables, a, b, and c. So a, b here are the sides of the triangle. Okay, now here we're dealing with the square, so A and B would be the same length, but you could have another triangle like so, where A and B are different lengths. But the key here is that C, okay, A squared plus uh, B squared is equal to C squared. We can see we have the C squared all by itself on this side of the equation. Uh, C is always the longest side of the right triangle. That is called the hypotenuse, okay, and it's always opposite of the 90 degree angle. So in this particular little uh, triangle right here, this would be C, okay? So the longest side of the right triangle is C, and the other sides can be A and B, really doesn't make a difference. But uh, definitely C is always the hypotenuse, which is, again, the longest side. All right, so basically it says the sum of the squares of the smaller sides, if we, eat those, eat, uh, if we add the sums of these squares, okay, let me start this again, that's equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example. 
So here is a square. Okay, the sides are two. So here, this would be two. And this is two right here. So A could be, uh, for example, two or B could be two. It doesn't make a difference here. And let's figure out the distance of the hypotenuse, which is, of course is C. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And we're going to plug in our respective values. All right, so for A, that's going to be two. B, that's going to be two. So two squared plus two squared is equal to two squared is four. Four plus four is equal to C squared. So four plus four is eight. So eight is equal to C squared or C squared is equal to eight. And to solve for C, all we have to do is to take the square root of both sides. So you can actually get the decimal value here. So C is equal to um, positive and negative square root of eight, uh, but we're only interested in the positive root as we're talking about distance. All right, so this is a simple example of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you understand this, hopefully, you can start thinking about our actual problem. We're like, all right, Mr. UT Math, man, I think I might know where you're going here with this problem. So if I'm over here in the corner and I want to get to the center and I know uh, now how to find the distance of the diagonal or the hypotenuse of this right triangle, I want to get to the center, which is what? Maybe like halfway along that diagonal. Well, indeed, I am giving you big hints here. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I had to get that in because this is important, okay? It's important enough for me to stop the video, okay? I'll stop because I need your support. Now, why do I need your support? Well, I need to reach as many people as possible because there are so many people out there that need help in mathematics. And the only difference between them, um, you know, not being successful and being successful is finding that one teacher that can explain things in a way that they like and understand. OK, and for all of us, you know, we can think of teachers that, you know, really, um, you know, are special to us because we're like, wow, that one teacher, you know, taught things in a particular way that I actually got it. OK, it doesn't mean that other teachers are not good teachers because they can connect with other people as well. But what I try to uh, do in terms of mathematics is really break things down in a clear and understandable way. So that's why I kind of like to take each problem in a comfortable pace, okay? So by you subscribing, it really does tell that YouTube algorithm to push out uh, this content to more people. And uh, to me, that's helping as many people as possible, right? And if you're gonna do that, make sure to hit that notification bell as well. And uh, real quick, if you need help on the Pythagorean theorem or word problems or anything mathematics beyond this video, check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video uh, to include things like you know my geometry course or math skills rebuilder course or maybe even my pre-algebra course. I cover all of this, uh, you know, the topics that we're talking about, uh, you know, in those courses. But uh, let's get back to this problem. And uh, now we have some sort of um, idea of what to do. At least hopefully you're saying, all right, if I got a 50 foot square room, I'm in the corner, I wanna get to the center. And I know now I can find the length of the diagonal, which is uh, the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Now it happens to be that the diagonals, okay, which are you know things that go from corner to corner of a square, they do intercept at the center but you could probably just kind of think to yourself, well, we're dealing with the square. If we go halfway along the diagonal, which is halfway along the hypotenuse, we would get to the center of the room. Okay, so our strategy here is to use the Pythagorean theorem to find C, which is this entire distance, but we don't want that entire distance. We want only half of it. So let's find C, and then we'll take that and divide it by two, and then, of course, we'll have our answer. All right, so let's do the work right now. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And uh, you know, actually have the wrong numbers here. I have 40. This should be 50. I apologize for that. You see, I picked that up immediately. All right, so 50 uh, feet by 50 feet. And we're going to go ahead and plug those values in for A and B. So 50 squared is 2,500 plus uh, 50 squared, 2,500 is equal to C squared. So that's 5,000 is equal to C squared. So C is going to be equal to the square root of 5,000. And of course, uh, use your calculator, but uh, that's going to be positive or negative. And we're going to uh, be talking in decimals here. So that's approximately 70.71. All right, so that is the value of the entire um, hypotenuse, but we don't want the entire diagonal or hypotenuse. We want one half of that. So let's just take one half of 70.71 and we get approximately 35.35. Uh, .35. We'll round that up to 35.4 feet. 
right? We can't forget our units of measure. So that is that, but there is a very easy way to figure out what the distance of this um, uh, diagonal is, or the, uh, the distance of the hypotenuse on a right triangle when we have a, um, this is what we call a special right triangle. And let me show you here, because when I show you how um, else we can figure this out, you're gonna be like, why didn't you show me this in the beginning, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, this is a special case triangle. Now, when you have a triangle, a right triangle, where the sides are the same, this is basically half of a square, okay? The angles here are 45 degrees, because remember, this is 90 degrees. Actually, let me just draw this real quick. So we're splitting these right angles right here. So we're gonna take that 90 degrees and we're gonna basically bisect them so we have 45 degrees. So this angle here is 45 degrees and this angle right here is 45 degrees. So what we're dealing with is a special right triangle. We call this a 45, 45, 90 degree uh, special right triangle. And when you have a special right triangle, 45, 45, 90, this is so easy to find the hypotenuse. We, we can basically skip, or skip, excuse me, uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. Matter of fact, let me show you this right now. Okay, so when you have effectively a square, all right, uh, you're going to end up with a 45, 45 if you uh, draw your little diagonal there, which is, of course, the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So to find the length, okay, of the hypotenuse, of a 45, 45 degrees special right triangle, all you literally have to do is take the side, okay, and multiply by the square root of two. That is the formula, right? So whatever the side is, and of course, this, we're talking about uh, a square here, so uh, the sides will be equal. So just take one side, multiply by square root of two, and you will always get the hypotenuse. So let's go and do this right now. So 50 times the square root of two, and you can go into your calculator, square root of two is approximately 1.41421 or so, multiply it by uh, uh, 50, and you'll see we'll get approximately 70.71, which, of course, is what we got way over here when we did the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so uh, both, uh, you know, techniques are appropriate for this particular problem. But, you know, when it comes to solving math word problems, the first thing you need to do is have the math skills for that particular problem. Okay, and I think that's where people really get frustrated in terms of like, you know, I can't solve a problem, you know, I just can't do it. You know, they get frustrated, but you know, first of all, you have to ask, hey, do you know, do you understand what the Pythagorean theorem is? Uh, do you understand, you know, uh, what a special right triangle is? You know, you have to start building your skills up. Now, you don't want to start learning math by just going right to word problems. And this is really important for those of you that may have to take some sort of special exam that involves math in your life. Something maybe like the SAT, uh, GED, uh, the CLEP exam, placement exams. It doesn't make a difference if you're trying to, you know, uh, get into college or graduate school or get a certification in something like a teacher certification. You need to build your math skills first. Okay, start there and then those are, your, you know, basically the tools, your math tools, and then apply them to solve problems. Just don't you know, try to just solve a bunch of problems. You're going to, you're going to, you know, find yourself frustrated. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.